<laughs> okay, all joking aside, this was a really cute cosplay to make, and I'm really happy how great it turned out. This took me about four days to make, so I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial, and let's go ahead and get into it. Yoo! So today we're going to be using two different patterns. I'm using New Look 6914 and we'll be using Vest B for the first option of this outfit. And then I'm going to be using Quick Sew Pattern 2310 for the longer skirt. The reason why is because I just don't want to draft a skirt pattern. So the fabric of choice I'm going to be using right now is a very nice black grenadine. I think this is what it is. It's not a cotton. It feels like a polyester, but it's not. And it is woven. This has very little stretch and it is a pure black. I got this at Vestestafa and that's based here in Denmark. Feel free to choose your own different black material, but I think this one will work perfect. And of course now just go ahead and pin it all out and then cut it out. So now you can see that I have everything cut out. What I'm going to do is attach the skirt pieces first and then let it drape so that way the hem will get stretched out correctly and then I'll cut out a waistband for this. So I'm just going to do a basic stitch at the sides here to here making sure this is the middle piece but first I have to cut it open. Oh my god. So since it's still on fold, slowly make my way across and we good. Pin two sides of the other skirt to it and then take it to the sewing machine. Here, I'm gonna start draping the skirt, make sure it stretches appropriately, looks nice. And I'm just gonna leave that maybe for a few hours, see if it stretches. Afterwards, I'm going to add the hem, ruffle hem at the bottom and then the gold line. I think there's another embellishment, but then I will add the waistband after I get done with the bottom part. Now I'm going to unpin all of the vest and then assemble it the way that it says to assemble. Now that I got the front all together and sewn on, I'm not going to do the sleeves or connect it yet at the shoulders. I'm going to go ahead and hem the bottom part so it looks really nice. I decided since this is just a cosplay, I'm just going to not line it <laughs> and I'm just going to finish the raw edges on the inside. For the hem, I made sure to pin it first and then I drafted one side while it was on the mannequin. I'm going to cut off the bottom and then do a nice roll hem. So what I'm going to do now with the skirt hem, I'm going to sew this lace on top of it, right sides together. Then I'm going to fold over that hem, sew it down so that way the lace pops out and it creates a nice crisp line. The bottom hem looks really nice and wavy but that's not what we want for this outfit. Now that I have this lace attached, I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to sew on top of it. This is because I want the lace to be very pronounced and that I didn't want to lose any of the actual distance on the lace hem. So I had made this trim a long time ago. I haven't used it, but I think this would be a perfect color to go at the bottom hemline. You can see here that there's like a yellow hemline here. I don't want it to be too yellow yellow and I think a nice gold would look better than a yellow or like if I had a mustard I think that would look good. Here we are with that and then it pops just a little bit more and it's so subtle. On Nezuko's chibi art it doesn't show it but I think this would look good and then I might just keep the actual surging here there sew it down and then t like either hand stitch it or go over the top again with a nice top stitch so one last look this is what it looks like without this bias tape that I made and then this is what it looks like with it. I think it looks so much nicer and it gives a nice little touch and detail. So I will be adding this instead of like a mustard color and I like the mute gold so it's not so pronounced. Slowly start sewing this on. So now what I did was I took my tape measure and I went around about three inches from the hemline and I created a nice solid line going all the way from the top to the end. And now I'm going to be using satin ribbon on this line 
Then I'm just going to be sewing it down. I'll probably do both sides of the ribbon. I decided that this three inch line was too high, so I went for an inch and a half. That is actually going to be about almost four centimeters. So that's how high we're actually going to make the second line. And then I'm just going to go ahead and wash this blue marking off in the dish, in, not in the dishwasher, but in the washing machine after I'm done making the skirt. Now I created a two inch waistband on the curve. Having a curve will actually help it stretch around my waist and lay more even and flat. I'm going to cut this out and then bring it to the sewing machine and do some basic sewing. I went ahead and pinned together the skirt to the waistband and in order to do that I found the middle points of different section areas and I pinned them. The skirt is a tiny bit larger than some of the points on the waistband. That's because it's got this big flare and it's a circle skirt so it won't weigh correctly. So what I'm going to do is in between I'm going to make a super tiny little pleat in the middle of each section that I pinned. I pinned it about four different times on each front part and back part. That doesn't make sense. Okay so I pinned it in the middle first and then I found four more additional parts in between so that way I know where to make the pleat. So let's go ahead and get started by sewing. Now I'm going to be using this beautiful pink stretched taffeta for the apron. I almost said waistband. <laughs> Whoops! So yeah, I'm going to be cutting this, but first I'm going to take some measurements. I'm going to measure out how long I need the apron to be, but I'm going to do that on my actual mannequin. Make sure that it's not too long, I want it to be a little bit high. I'm going to base mine about 10 inches with seam allowance, and then of course I need to make it go around, so I need to make a new waistband on me for the apron. So I need to make three cuts. I need one for the ruffles, one for the apron itself, and then one for the waistband. By the way, do I look really cute in this? Like, I love black, purple, like, it's so cute. So a long time ago, I drafted this skirt panel piece. It looks like this, but now I'm going to slowly extend it more and then work my way all the way up to here. Because the apron doesn't just sit on the front, it wraps around a little bit to the back. So, and I don't want it to be just a basic little square. So we're going to actually extend it out just a little bit more. Probably that much more. So, what is that? Six inches, so about 12 centimeters, something like that. Go all the way over, and then we're going to go all the way up, and then do that. And then repeat it for the same side. And I am cutting two of these because I want this to have a backing. And then I'm going to actually maybe add interfacing. I'm not sure. Because this might be a really cute apron that I can use for other things. Hello! Did you come to see what we're doing today, Bowsy? Once I was happy with my design, I cut out the front and back pieces at the same time. Once I had the piece cut out, I made sure to line up the sides and then I pinned it together so I can curve the bottom edge. This bottom edge corner needs to be curved so it can lay nicely and not turn into another skirt. Do you mind? I drew four inches across it and this is going to be my ruffle line. <laughs> so I'm going to fold it over and then I'll have two inch ruffles for the apron. So now I'm just going to cut this out twice, maybe three times just to be safe so I have extra and that way I also have some for the waistband. You going to leave me alone now? Probably not. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this out a few times. In order for me to do that, I'm gonna cut this out then lay it on top again. So that way I already have a straight line and I just follow it two more times. Then we're gonna take it that way. Sorry, someone's doing construction and I'm trying to like do this really quickly. So anyways, I'm gonna iron this out. Then I'm going to iron this flat to make a nice little fold. So my ruffles will look like this, kind of like all my other ruffles and then I can pleat it afterwards. Then we'll assemble, yeah. So now I have this complete undone side of fabric. I'm going to try to create the design by using a straight edge. I don't think I have a straight edge large enough, so what I'm going to do is use something that's really long and is straight and then kind of mark out where I need to make the lines for Nezuko's apron. So Nezuko's apron has like this nice white geometric design. Feel free to do it any which way. You could actually probably buy this material in like the home section. I just, I don't have that option for me. So I'm just going to draw it first 
with my line and chalk. So I just want to show how much progress I've done. On the back side you can see all the markings that I made. This is not 100% accurate. I can't figure out for the life of me what is accurate on Nezuko's pattern. So instead I just did a bunch of diagonals and some big tri like diamond shapes. And then I wanted to show you the difference between doing a single stitch versus a three stitch. The three stitch is the ones that you can see a lot more prominent. So they stick out more versus the single. The single just kind of dissipates. So it's important that you use either something like a stretch stitch. I did not use a satin stitch. Oh, this is actually a stretch stitch too. So this one would, will do like two really close by, but at a diagonal. I am using this one here. So that way it does three stitches in one stitch area and that way it's like super good. This material does stretch so originally I did do a single stitch first to prevent it from stretching. Now I'm going back over it and it's taking forever but my goodness it makes the patterns pop so much better. Alright now that I went ahead and surged the ribbon trim or the ruffle trim this way when I sew it down it won't come frayed because usually you have to work with it a lot and this fabric loves to fray. See, look, it's already frayed. That's bad. Anyways, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and pin the ruffle on the inside and then we're going to make sure that it is pleated. That way we make a nice little ruffle like this. So now we're just going to start at one side and slowly work our way all the way around, pleating it in the process. Once we're done pleating it, we're going to lift this other piece and then we're going to pin it on that side. We're going to keep the top part open and then we're going to flip it inside out. You'll see what I mean. Let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to show you what the fi- Ow! Ow! That hurt! That hurt! Oh my god, I'm not bleeding though, so I'm okay. But I did poke myself, so that hurt. Anyways, let's, let's talk about this apron really quickly. So this apron, now that I'm safe, I actually had to embroider this. You can see all the mess ups with the chalk, so this will be turned inside out. And you want to pin your actual ruffle piece to this part first. And then you want to pin your lining to it. Your lining has the most stretch out of all the fabric, so it has the most give. Versus if you were trying to pin this front piece to the lining, it will not fit because this has no stretch anymore because of all this embroidery parts. So what you want to do is go around the entire perimeter and pin them together, making a nice little pocket, kind of like a bag. We want to keep this top, this top part open. I'm just pinning it so that I know it lines up properly. And then I'm going to be sewing all the way from here, from there. And then when we are done with that, we're going to take out all the pins. If you have any broken pins, make sure to discard them correctly. So let's go ahead and get sewing this together. If you have any questions about this part, let me know. The type of ruffle that I have on this is actually a box pleated ruffle. So that's a little different. If you need a little bit of explanation on that, leave me a comment down below and I will be sure to help you out. So after you're done sewing this all around the little perimeter, you can see that it's nice and together now. What you want to do is clip the edges before you flip it inside out. And I especially mean this curve here. Because when you flip it, it's going to actually pucker a little on both the lining and the original piece. So what we're going to do is just clip a few notches into it so it just lays flat nicer. And then we're going to flip it inside out. Make sure you have a really nice sharp pair of scissors because you don't have to go all the way around, just the curve itself. Now that the curve is clipped, we're going to flip. Moment of truth. The reason why I haven't cut this part off yet is because I want to make sure that all of it looks nice. You don't want to sew any of the top because you want that to be attached to the waistband. And voila, we have a cute little apron piece right here. Look at that, it's like Mama Betty Crocker. Well, excuse me, it's more like cute baby demon crockery over here. So this is exactly what we were going for. It looks so adorable. You can see the little pat geometric pattern. I didn't do it on the ruffles, so sue me. 
Um, it looks kind of funny here that there's this extra embroidery line, but you know, that's what it calls for. So what you can do now is press this so it lays nice and flat. Now that this looks really clean, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the rest of this and then make sure I have enough of this piece for the waistband and then cut a few more strips so I can make ruffles exactly this style for my vest. Now that I have this ironed and pressed out, you can see how nice the little frills look. I'm so happy. Okay, so now I'm going to pin this here and then I'm going to make it go all the way across the top and then I'm going to add a white strip of fabric here to tie back. And the reason for that is I want to go for a little bit of accuracy on that because the back tie of Nezuko actually has a white bow. <laughs> Why can't it just be pink still? I don't know. But what I'm going to do is take the rest of this that I cut off on here. I'm going to fold it in half and find the middle point. Okay, not really the middle point, but the middle point here. And I'm going to pin it to the middle of this. And when I do that, I'm then going to slowly work my way across. And then the end part, I'm going to add a few maybe like 10 inches or 20 centimeters of white. So now I'm pinning down the apron's waistband and then going to sew it down. With the rest of the pink strips, I'm going to use this for Nezuko's vest. The vest has a tiny row of pink around the armholes. I decided to make them cute pink ruffles rather than a bias tape. So originally it's like this big, but I thought it would be too big on the armholes, so I cut it in half. Then I ironed it and then searched it. You know, basically the exact same thing. Where did we put it? I don't know where I put it. But the exact same thing we did for the apron. And then we pleat it, going one direction, not box pleats, onto the armhole, right sides facing together. And then we're going to sew it down. So I did about half an inch kind of pleat. And you can see it here because they're really small and it's just a nice little embellishment. Now that I have this sewn on, look how nice these pleats are. I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to top stitch this part down using black, th using black thread. And this way it'll be nice and concealed and the pleats will lay correctly so it won't fluff outwards. So it's kind of like anchoring down. I like having my carriage case off of my sewing machine so it's easier. And I'm going to start by pushing the fold over first and making sure it's nice and taut so I don't get stuck under it. And then I'm going to fold it and slowly begin. Now that the vest is almost finished, it's time to figure out where I want to add the buttons. So one here, here, and here. So I have this big grab bag of buttons. I'm going to look for some that I think will match. Sometimes with cosplay, it's okay to not be accurate. And you know, buttons is one of those cases where if you find something prettier than just a plain flat gold button, go ahead and use it. Turns out Nezuko's buttons are actually white. So I'm not sure if I wanna go with white, but I might try to use like a silver instead. So to finish off the vest, I'm going to practice a few times my buttonhole technique. So I go ahead and put the button at the back part and then drop this little flag and then I'm using scrap fabric so I can test out how the fabric is going to react. Once I am comfortable doing that, I'm going to bring it to <laughs> I'm going to bring the vest to the machine and I'm going to start sewing it down. This is definitely a more advanced technique if you are not used to doing this. Make sure you get comfortable doing this first and then go ahead and start adding your buttons. So here we go. So this is really difficult. They're not completely straight, but that's okay. And now what you want to do is use a seam ripper and just rip open the seam right between it all. Yay! So this is how far we are now. I just need to add the white bow at the back, make the necktie, and the little hat thingy. So now we're going to move on to the white parts because all the other color parts are kind of done minus that little necktie. So I'm just going to skip that right now. So I have this nice thin white cotton. I'm going to be using a nice lightweight interfacing so that way I can still maneuver this when I need to tie the bow at the back and then create the nice little headband. The headband I'm going to be using is a nice thin one. I'm going to create a little slide for it to go on. 
and then attach the frills that way. To do the frills, I'm actually going to be cutting out two inches, which is also five centimeters. So I'm going to slowly mark it out and then make my way across, then iron on my interfacing. So now that I have the interfacing on, I'm going to flip it inside out and then I'm going to sew it together to create a very nice tubey kind of thing going on here. So now I'm going to flip it and make sure the seam is nice and pressed out with my finger press. And then I'm slowly going to top stitch the top area so it doesn't buckle. So now that I have the base of the headband attachy thingy, it has a very nice interfacing here. I made sure all the edges are good. I'm actually going to sew the side in here just a tiny bit so it's nice and clean and doesn't show any of the surging part. Then I'm going to go ahead and attach it here. I'll show you how to do that. But first, let me sew this down. So what I'm going to do is pin this together kind of like this and then I'm going to flip it around kind of like a bias tape. So first we're going to sew it down making sure that we have the right side that I want and then do a, a really nice edge stitch. Ta -da! I already pinned it down so it's easier for me to sew here. So what I can do is actually whip stitch it myself or top stitch it. So I think I want to keep it really nice and cute and so I might just whip stitch it really quickly and then I can slide it onto my headband. So I usually would do this in the same color but I'm doing it in contrast so you can see it easier. So when I say whip stitch, I'm going to go around to the back kind of like a shoelace and then come out the front. So then I'm just going to pull it outwards and thus creating a whip stitch. So in order to create a whip stitch, I'm gonna go into the fabric and then come out the other side and then pull. The other side does not see the, the stitches at all. Now we're just gonna keep on going all the way down this little headband. And to test it out. Oh, this might be so big. No, it fits just right. Oh, so cute. So for the end part of my apron, I'm actually going to be cutting about five inches, which is about 10 centimeters. No, 13 centimeters. And then I'm going to add the inner facing to it. So here we are with the ring light and everything. So this is what my little white ribbon strips look like. It has the inner facing, but in order to give it a little bit more help, I decided to double serge the edges and then, you know, still stitch the regular seam allowance line. And then I'm going to flip it inside out like I did here. This one's already flipped inside out. And then I'm actually going to press it so that it stays nice and flat so it doesn't it, it you know the seams will look nice and then after i press it i'm going to top stitch around the entire perimeter so i have one side of the apron actually completely done this is what it looks like with with the little white part attached now so it's gonna have like a super nice big bow when i tie it so in order to do that, I'm going to take the edge of this one and then the opening of this one. Then I'm going to slightly fold in this. So I'm going to measure by I'm going to measure by how much salvage edge there is. So then fold it inwards like this so it's nice and crisp and then just stick this inside. Now depending on which side is like prettier, I don't think it matters. So all we have to do now is sew down this and make sure that this little pink flap stays in the middle. Okay? So I have the black material out again and I drew a nice curve because I want this kind of on the bias, not completely because I don't want it to stretch at the tips. And then I'm just going to cut it out. This is about three inches wide, which is, it is eight centimeters. I'm going to sew it to the sides. I don't think I'll be adding interfacing to this because I want it to be a little bit floppy. So we'll see where it goes. And then at the end, we're going to taper it like a ribbon. But first, let's go ahead and cut this out. After I have everything cut out, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and then sew it all together. I'm going to leave one side open so I can flip it inside out. I'm going to go ahead and make the diamond edges so that way it's easy for me to flip and have the right 
design that I want. So I just finished top stitching and inverting all of it. So what I did was I pulled it through and then left one little side right here and then I flipped it under like I did with the apron and then I top stitched all around the top. Now what I need to do is create a new buttonhole here and then on the other side sew the button. And then we are done with the neckerchief. Um, you kind of already know how I did this, so I'm going to skip this step. If you don't remember how I did it, I used a buttonhole. I made sure to make this measurement. To show you the last parts of this cosplay, which is the little mouthpiece, I think I'm going to forego the little serving tray just for now because... You know, I don't really need to. Also, I'm going to use a pre-owned shirt, stockings, and shoes. So if you don't have those, go ahead and go out and buy those. Here are my new ingredients for my dongos. So I actually went out and bought these nice, like, bamboo skewers. They were a dollar. I bought these star foam balls. No, they, these are kind of like special balls. They're not really star foam. They're harder. I don't know what they're called. But they're like plaster balls. And then I'm going to be painting them. Afterwards, we're going to be cutting slits into these little balls using like an exacto knife and then putting in this so I can bite onto it. That's going to change into a different size. Originally, I was going to use like air dry clay. Let me show you what happened. Here's my air dry clay. Um, it's literally foam clay, but the problem is it is foam now. So I can't use it. I waited too long. So I'm just gonna, you know, throw that away. I'm gonna take out the foam clay and the topping. I'm gonna use this for painting or something else someday. It's always good to keep small little bins like this for something that you might need in the future. Cosplay hoarding at its finest, you know, just recycling. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my skewers and my package of little balls. I'm gonna see if they can actually be skewered by these bamboo skewers. So to test this out, I'm gonna repeatedly shove in one of these bamboo skewers into the little hole that's provided and see if I can go through it. Oh, it came out, yay! So I have two different paints here. This is a really dark green. I'm gonna do this extremely lightly onto this and hopefully it doesn't come out too dark. If it does, I'm gonna go back with a white and maybe lighten it. Maybe I'll just lighten it in this like container here. That's why we have this. And then I have this super dimensional fabric paint here. I think it will look really nice if I use this as the pink and slowly paint it all over the balls. Now, in order for me to paint the balls, I have already skewered both of them so they can go onto my stick so it's easier for me to paint. So what I wanna do is make sure that they are separated first and then I'm gonna hold it and then slowly paint it and go from there. I'm not actually going to paint this middle one. This middle one is gonna stay white because the middle one is white. So I want to make sure that the pink and green are done correctly first before I start assembling this. I should have gone out and got some more white because this is all the white that I have. And then I'm going to pour out a little bit of the white and then work with the green so that it looks nicer. I'm just going to lightly pour out a little bit because I don't want to have it too green. Actually, more green is better than not. I think that'll be plenty. So now I'm going to add white and then start mixing the colors just like you were in grade school. Once I do that, I'm going to keep mixing until I get the right color green. I want this green to be very crayon color green and a true green versus a dark green. Then I'm going to slowly start painting it onto one of my balls. I'm going to use a small brush for this. I don't want a big brush and accidentally knock onto the other ball. You can actually put the other ball on a different skewer too. Alright, so you definitely don't want to fall and trip and stab your eye out on these. I went ahead and put my skewers in a box to hold it up so that my balls don't get touched. Now I'm going to use that three-dimensional puffy paint and slowly work it around one of the balls. You can see that it's not being absorbed like the green one and that's okay because this is a different type of paint, it's not acrylic. So I'm going to go over it multiple times with many layers. And you can see I'm just slowly working it all around, spreading it evenly. It's okay if it's not even because, you know, this is food. Food isn't perfect all the time. This is what one layer looks like. It looks like a giant gumball kind of thing. It's kind of cute, but you know, I want this to be more vibrant. So I'm going to go back on with multiple layers. This is going to be layer number two, and I'm just going to let it dry in between about five minutes each time and slowly work it around like nail polish. So now that we have all of these painted and drying, I put these two together because we're going to start cutting this out. So what I'm going to do first is cut out this top part so it's nice and clean and then I have something to work with. 
first thing I'm going to do is actually separate the top and the bottom. I don't need this bottom piece, it completely has too much ridges, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. So at first I'm going to cut out a corner of this plastic cover. I don't want to use all of the clean slate first, but I have a new idea for cutting out a mouthpiece. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to test this piece of plastic here, see where it goes in my mouth, like, like this. Okay, so this is perfect, so I can just cut straight down this way. Now, what I wanted to do is to go around this ball here, so I'm going to curve around it slightly. Now I want to poke two holes here and here. Probably wondering, why am I using this plastic instead of just putting it into the sewn spheres? Well, I think it would look better if I can photograph from any direction. If you have a heat gun, you can heat this up lightly and then maneuver it where you want it to go. Luckily, it's pretty flexible. So what I'm going to do is fold it over and cut it so it has a nice slit. And there we go. Perfect, I think. So now if I can just slightly fold it inwards, even if I bend it just a little bit, I think it'll be okay. Yeah? Okay, now it looks like this. I'm going to remove the white ball. Put one first. This new one. Slowly slide it down. Oh, it doesn't look like it fits. Shoot. Okay, so this is why we're testing it. I'm gonna have to take out more. I'm just slowly scooping out. Oh, now it's too big. That doesn't work. So, let's just try cutting off half of it. Mm, I think I'm gonna recut it and then shape it around the ball it's first, but this is kind of like the idea you get. Mm. <laughs> so the last part of this is actually to show you what the end plastic piece looks like. This is the end plastic piece. It's very small actually. It goes around the white ball. There are holes and it's slightly bent and curved but it's still flat. I rounded out the edges so that it wouldn't cut my mouth and be a little bit more friendly. You can see I actually tested it a lot so you can see my teeth marks. And then all I have to do is start assembling it. So in order for me to assemble, I'm going to put one side here, put the white ball in, and then put the other side of the plastic carefully so I don't rip it. It is still possible to rip it and slide it all the way down. Then I take my super duper pink, super coated ball and now I'm just going to put it on at the end. Make sure everything is pressed nice and tightly and we are done. If you want, you could actually super glue this in place so none of it falls out, but you know, it's pretty secure. Like this, see, look, it's not coming off. And that is how you make Nezuko's Made Dongos. If you have any questions about this little cosplay prop, leave me a comment down below asking what your problem is. And make sure to check out some of my other videos and remember to subscribe to my channel. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye!